I'm Mena Hattus Algra, and I'm Professor Emeritus of Developmental Neurology at the University Medical Center in Groningen, the Netherlands. I will summarize our paper on predictive value of the general movement assessment and the standardized infant neurodevelopmental assessment in infants at high risk of neurodevelopmental disorders. This paper has been published in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology and has been written by Uta Takke, Joachim Pitz, André Rouk, Heike Filippi and me. What do we know already about this topic? We very well know the general movement assessment, in short GMA, in three-month-old high-risk infants very well predicts cerebral palsy. CP. But we also gradually realized that the clinical application of GMA is hampered in the first place by the fact that it's based on video recordings, which hampers direct feedback to the caregivers during the consultation. Second, we also know that substantial experience is required before you are a reliable GMA assessor. We also know that in general, applying an infant neurological examination is more easy. And the most commonly used infant neurological examination is the HEIN, the Hammersmith Infant Neurological Examination. But the literature indicates that in infants at the corrected age of three months, HEIN predicts CP and developmental delay less well than GMA does do. So we wondered whether the same would be true for the more recently developed SINDA, SINDA's neurological scale, if you compared it to GMA. And we wondered this because SINDA pays much more attention to this quality of spontaneous movements than hinders do. SINDA has 7 out of 28 items dedicated to the quality of spontaneous movements, whereas this is only true for one of the 26 items in HEIN. So we embarked on a study in 109 at infants at risk who had been referred to the Child Neurology Center in Frankfurt, Germany, the majority being very preterm, and we compared in, at the age of about three months, the predictive value of SINDA's neurological scale and GMA. And in GMA, we paid attention to two signs. In the first place, to movement complexity and variation, which means the repertoire consisting of the independent exploration of all degrees of freedom in all the participating joints. And second, to the presence of the age-specific fidgety movements, whether they were absent, sporadically present, or more frequently present. And in addition, we paid attention to the quality of the fidgety movements. Why attention to the two signs? Because they refer to different neurological substrates. A strongly reduced movement complexity and variation suggests a reduced integrity of the cortical-subcortical networks. Absent fidgety movements indicates an impaired maturation of the cortical networks. And when both signs are present in high-risk infants, we know that this has a high predictive value for CP with sensitivities and specificities of over 90%. The significance of sporadically present Fidgeties or abnormal fidgeties is less clear. So here an example first. Typical general movements in an infant at the corrected age of three months. The infant shows sufficient movement complexity and variation, and in addition, she shows the age-specific fidgety movements. The clip only lasts 30 seconds, which is too little. In order to evaluate movement quality, you need at least three minutes of a moving infant in an adequate behavioral state. Next. 
next example is an infant with atypical general movements. The infant shows a strongly reduced movement complexity and variation, but the infant does show the age-specific fidgety movements. And then the third example, again an infant with atypical general movements. This infant also shows a strongly reduced movement complexity and variation. And in addition to that sign, she also shows absence of fidgety movements. So this child has both risk factors and so the infant is at very high risk of CP. Then to Sinda's neurological scale. Sinda has been developed for infants at the age 6 weeks to 12 months corrected age. Sinda has three scales, a neurological scale, a developmental scale and a socio-emotional scale. Here we focus on the neurological scale. On the right hand side you see the form of the neurological scale. 28 items including 7 on the quality of spontaneous movements where typical means varied and atypical stereotyped. The criteria and cutoffs for the dichotomous items are independent of the infant age. And throughout in Sinda's age range, the cutoff for at risk is 21 points or less. It takes less than 10 minutes to perform the neurological scale, including administration. And we were able to demonstrate good reliability and a high predictive value for CP and or intellectual disability. So now to our study again. So we compared predictive values of DMA in Sinda's neurological scale and we followed the children till the age of at least two years. 14 of the children had CP, 9 intellectual disability and if you combined these two 16 had an atypical outcome of whom 14 CP. So in the following I will focus on the association of GMA and Sinda's neurological scale and atypical outcome. So here we see the association between GMA complexity and variation and atypical outcome at two years. We see that 30 infants had a strongly reduced movement complexity and variation and that 15 of them had an atypical outcome. Only one child with a better movement complexity and variation had also an atypical outcome. Here a similar slide, now the association between fidgety movements and atypical outcome. We see that 8 infants had an absence of fidgety movements and all eight had an atypical outcome. But we also see that another eight who had either sporadically present or more frequently present fidgety movements also had an atypical outcome. It's clear that sporadically present fidgety movements have a predictive property that is in between absent fidgeties and more frequently present fidgeties. We also found that an abnormal quality of fidgety movements, this breakdowns kind of fidgety or exaggerated fidgety, had a low predictive value for CP and or intellectual disability. Best prediction was when we combined both signs. So we had 12 children who had a strongly reduced movement complexity and variation and either absent fidgeties or sporadically present fidgety movements. Eleven of them had an atypical outcome. And this resulted in the following predictive values. You see four values and three of them were over 90%. The lowest value was for sensitivity being 69%. And now then, that was what the study was all about, to the association of Sinda's neurological scale and atypical outcome. 
we had 23 infants who had an at-risk SINDAS score, 21 points or less. And 15 of them had an atypical outcome. Only one child with a better neurological scale had an atypical outcome. So this resulted in the following predictive values. Again, three of the four values were over 90%. Here, the positive predictive value was lowest with 65%. So we concluded that in three months old, at risk infants, GMA and SINDAS neurological scale equally well predicted CP and or intellectual disability. For GMA, we indeed found that it predicted outcome best when both GMA signs were present. The combination of a strongly reduced movement complexity and variation and either absent or sporadically present fidgety movements. And these findings may be clinically relevant because SINDA takes less time to learn to apply and SINDA does not require a video recording, therewith allowing feedback directly during the consultation to the caregivers. Of course, this is only a first study, so replication studies are required. Thank you for your attention.